Hi everyone, Fate here, and in today's video we're going to be moving from pole to pole on our planet Earth and looking at two stars known as Polaris and Sigma Octantis, or Polaris Australis, otherwise known as the pole stars. So let's get to it. In the south polar sky, we find the large blue stars of Acrox National and the second brightest star in the sky of Canopus. The imaginary line is drawn between Acrox and Achenar and intersected by 90 degrees to Canopus. Here we find the 5th magnitude Sigma Octantis, a solitary star in the southern circumpolar constellation of Octans. Looking north now, we must find the lesser Ursa Minor, or Little Bear, and Ursa Major, the Great Bear or Plough. Polaris is known as Alpha Ursa Minoris and is found by following the right hand side of the pan in Ursa Major through the orange giant of Dubha upwards to the bright yellow-white star of Polaris. So how big are the stars? Polaris is a huge yellow-white giant star. It contains 5.4 solar masses and has a radius of 37.5 solar radii. Its luminosity is gigantic, 1260 solar luminosity. Polaris is estimated to stay at 445 light years away by the Gaia telescope. It also has two companion stars. Polaris AB is a small F-class similar to Sirius and its orbit brings it very close to the giant star. Polaris B is further away from the binary pole, and again it's another F-class dwarf star. The second pole star, of course, Sigma Octantis, is on the borderline of giant class, an F-class star with 4.32 solar radii and 43 solar luminosities. We see straight away that the two stars are not really that evenly matched. In our first graphic, we're going to be bringing the two pole stars together the distance of one light year. What might we see if we were looking at from the beautiful Middle Eastern city of Dubai? Let's find out. We see the beautiful Burj Khalifa as the sun begins to set. For reference, I've shown the two brightest objects after the sun. Planet Venus shining at minus 4.8 apparent magnitude, and Sirius at minus 1.46, at their normal positions in the sky for reference purposes. Slowly we see developing pole star Sigma Octantis begins to dominate the skyline. Its closer distance and far increased powers make it over six times brighter than Venus at minus 6.92 apparent magnitude. On the bottom right, our eyes now focus on the gigantic star of Polaris AA. The apparent magnitude scale increases 2.5 times per unit of value, and this means that the North Polar Star will be approaching lunar brightness and over 100 times brighter than the planet Venus. Its yellow-white light will become a new feature in our skies and could see in broad daylight. It is a truly magnificent star, isn't it? So how do these stars rank currently on the brightest stars list? The problem both stars have is distance. Polaris comes in at rank 49th brightest, sandwiched between the orange giant stars of Alphard and Hamel. Its apparent magnitude of 1.98 varies and indeed we think it's getting brighter. Sigma Octantis, on the other hand, fails to even rank on the list. At a distance of 294 light years, it dims to 5.92 apparent magnitude and is only just visible with the naked eye. For that reason, it's by far the least famous of the two stars. For our next graphic, we move to the continent of Antarctica. And what we're going to do is take Polaris, Sigma Octantis, and even create a second sun and move them out to 10 light years distance. Let's see how the sun compares to these two giants. We see the beautiful southern light shining, and again we include Sirius and the planet Venus in their natural distance. On the left hand side, we see Sigma Octantis appearing now, just minus 1.9 magnitude. It outshines Sirius, but barely so. Next, we see the second sun shining at just two magnitudes, 43 times dimmer, yet remaining a bright star in the sky. Finally, we see the northern polar star of Polaris roughly two times brighter now than the planet Venus at an apparent magnitude of minus 5.57. Remember, this is 10 light years distance, and the star itself is drifting. It's thought that by the year 9100 AD, it will approach the same position in the sky as the magnificent supergiant Deneb. In Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, Polaris was fondly referred to as constant as the northern star. It's an important star, as you may know, because it's the closest CP variable. Such stars are used for determining distance for the standardized candle nature. On the other hand, Sigma Octantis's radio velocity means it's traveling away from the sun at 1.9 kilometers per hour. And over the millennia, 
will just get dimmer and dimmer from our point of view. That said, it does remain prominent on the flag of Brazil and is the dimmest star to appear on any of national flag. The mathematician Ptolemy observed Polaris in the year 100 and referenced it as a third magnitude star. Now we don't know how accurate readings were back then, but if that's true, Polaris has increased massively in brightness since then. When it comes to classifying these stars, we can see in the Sun in the middle of the main sequence a G-class dwarf. We move to the left into the F-class, and this is where we will find Sigma Octantis, an F0 main sequence star with a surface temperature of 7400 Kelvin. Polaris, on the other hand, is off the main sequence and also remains in the F-class but is a giant star with a surface temperature of 6015 Kelvin. The habitable zones of such stars vary largely. As we see on the left, the smaller habitable zone of the Sun in which we lie is not even one astronomical unit wide. It's clearly a disadvantage of G-class dwarf stars. Below the Sun, the habitable zone of Sigma Octantis, some six astronomical units wide, and if it were in our own solar system, would include everything from the far reaches of the asteroid belt to and including the beautiful gas giant of Saturn. Ceres, for example, would become habitable. Polaris, of course, is in another category again. Its habitable zone stretches some 31 astronomical units wide, a gigantic structure in which maybe one day we'll be able to find habitable worlds. In our own solar system it would include the blue world of Neptune and many dwarf planets in our own solar system. While these stars seem perfectly set up for life, their short lifetimes unfortunately, particularly in the case of Polaris which is just 70 million years old, preclude this from happening. We now move on to our final graphic today. What we're going to do is we're going to move all our stars to the centre of the solar system. We move from the planet Earth, though, to the planet Saturn, or more accurately, its beautiful moon of Titan. Let's see what might happen from its surface if these three stars were in the centre of our solar system. Here on Kraken Mare, the largest body of liquid on the surface of Titan, we hear the ethane roll waves rolling in. The sun at this distance shines at minus 21.8 apparent magnitude, Interestingly, next the yellow star of Sigma Octantis is almost the same brightness now in the Titan sky as we see our own sun from planet Earth. You see a beautiful Titan landscape, for the first time illuminated. This brief calmness, however, does not last long as giant star Polaris begins to take over. Shining now at some minus 29 apparent magnitude, Titan's sky is now approximately 17 times brighter than the sun at planet Earth eight times brighter even than the planet Venus, and at least one and a half times brighter than the Sun and planet Mercury. It's difficult sometimes to appreciate just how different some stars are in power from our own Sun. So all that remains is to choose a winner for the title of Champion Pole Star. Neither of these beautiful stars, the two Polarises, is known to have a planetary system. Unfortunately, the closer of the two, Sigma Octantis, remains some 17.8 million astronomical units from our planet Earth. If the New Horizons space probe were heading in that direction, it would take some 5.7 million years to reach. 25 times fainter, Sigma Octantis is not the same category of stars as its largest sister Polaris. With little else to go on, the importance of Polaris in human history as a guiding light for sailors or an inspiration for William Shakespeare seems to me to outweigh the relatively unknown Sigma Octantis star. It is without question the Polaris then deserves the title. Let's hope in the future these two wonderful stars, diametrically opposed, are studied and wondered in more depth. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our Brightest Star series where we feature many local stars. Some of these videos have done very well, whereas others remain underviewed in my, my own point of view particularly this one of G-class stars. So don't forget to check it out. Take care of each other in these difficult times that we do find ourselves in. And I'll see you on the next one.